Hi, I'm Jake Guest, and uh, this is Kildeer Farm in Norwich, Vermont. Uh, we farm here, my wife and I, on about 40 acres, uh, most of which actually is rented, but um, we have about three acres uh, on the home farm and another 10 acres nearby, and we own about 12 miles away the 24 acres, which we actually are presently leasing to someone else. Uh, my, fir my first experience, practical experience with flaming was, uh, was this little device here. The idea <coughs> is, is that I can, I can apply flame to, to a bed, uh, I mean to, a, to, a, to anything, to a row. What I do is I go over, <coughs> I actually go over the rows that, that are planted just before the seeds come up. And this thing is very useful for, uh, for times when a crop, for instance, a crop that comes up much sooner than other crops where, where I just don't, it's, I, I, there's no point in going to get the tractor and putting the flamer on and doing the whole thing just for, you know, just for radishes or something, something that's quick. So I, I uh, all the beds are prepared ahead of time uh, and, and then I just take this flamer out just before the crop comes up and go along in the mark and flame the mark with the cedar, the cedar mark. And it kills everything that's germinated, and the crop comes up right behind it. Sometimes it literally, as the crop is coming, is actually cracked the soil. And uh, and when I flame it, it's just you know it's it's literally hours before it emerges. But when it comes up, there's no weeds available, and there's no weeds left. The flaming is very effective uh, on weeds that are newly emerged, small small weeds that are just emerged. It's less effective when the when the weeds are a little bit bigger, two or three inches tall or so still works, but sometimes you have to go a little slower or use more heat. It's also not particularly effective on grasses, unfortunately, because any grasses or any, any weed that comes from deeper in the soil and not right on the surface uh, doesn't get hit or re 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 can regrow. I found that the, the flatter the surfaces uh, of the stale seabed, the, the, the better the flamer works. It's really important. I, if there's any ridges or, uh, or lumpy soil, the, the weeds manage to, the, the, the flamer deflects off the lumps or the ridges. So I've experimented with different ways of preparing the beds and, and flat is important. Uh, that re works really well. I found that grasses are, are a real problem. Uh, the problem is that the, the growing tip of the grass is, is, is slightly below the surface. So the flamer goes over the top, kills the top of what's visible, and a few days later the, the, the grass reemerges. One way that I think I've dealt with the problem is to, is to flame a little later where grass is a problem because for some reason, I mean, at, at later time, the grass has, has, the growing tip has actually come out of the soil and is vulnerable and is, and is uh, you know, I can hit it with the flame. The ideal way to use this technique is to prepare the beds way ahead of time, as many weeks even ahead of time. What I try to do is get an area all, all fertilized, ready to go, and all the beds actually physically made. Then I start at one side, and you know I have to plant some early crops early. I plant them and do the flaming, whatever flaming I can, and then flame ahead. I always flame a week or so ahead of the actual planting. For those beds which have been, which I'm not planning to plant for say, four or five weeks, I may actually go do a tillage with a rotavator, a very light tillage with a rotavator, before I even get to the flaming, and then, then they're part of the sequence. I actually have some fields where I, 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 I make it a cycle, and I start back in the beginning again, re-prepare re the, <coughs> the beds, and <coughs> start all over again. Spinach is a crop, for instance, where I, every week I plant two beds, um, and I always have flame the week before, and, and flame the, right after the planting, and then have flamed a couple weeks for the the, the, the beds yet to be planted and tilled four weeks ahead of time. There are actually four, con four components to the, to the flamer. There is the, uh, the, the flaming, the flame heads themselves, there's the frame, there's the tank, and then there's the regulating mechanisms. Uh, the regulator consists of, uh, of a solenoid activated valve which simply turns the machine on or off. 
This tank, the tank is really important. Uh, it, it has to be, you can't just use a regular propane tank that you see standing around greenhouses. This has to be a motor fuel tank, and they're not so easy to get to, to locate. This was a used one we got pretty cheap, but they cost around, about new, they cost about $700. About $700. Uh, you know, as you can see, it holds about 40 gallons of, of fuel. Um, I figure it takes about uh, about $19, 19 to $20 an acre worth of fuel. This device is a burn, is, uses liquid propane as opposed to gas, and it, it, that, that's very significant because one of the difficulties that the, some of the European burners have is that using, using uh, gas means that they, they get too cold from the evaporation of all the gas. These burners are much different. They, trim, they move the, 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 the propane in a liquid form all the way down to the burners before it's actually burned so that, the, the, so that there's, no, uh, there's no super cooling of the lines. Uh, the cool, the uh, expansion of the gas just before it burns all takes place right down at the bottom of the burners. Uh, each burner is a 250,000 BTU burner. And that's, uh, I, I, it's pretty arbitrary what you, what you need. It depends on the width of the bed. This seems to be sufficient uh, for, my, for, my, uh, for my uses. It covers a 52-inch bed quite nicely. Uh, sometimes I use the burner for, for a single row crop, in which case I don't even use the outside, uh, the outside two burners, on, on the, the outside four burners. Only use the two inside ones and, and, and tip and tilt them so that they direct the flame di right down to a single row down, in the, down below there. So it, it's very versatile. There's lots of different uses for it. Uh, this is a good example of, of, uh, of what the flamer does. On, on my left here um, is, an, is a bed. These beds uh, are, are, were prepared at the same time, the one on the right and the one on the left, were prepared at the same time. They were uh, <clears throat> tilled and then rolled and marked. They use this roller. You can, you can see it uh, just barely. There's a, there are marks. The three rows uh, are marked out. And that's to guide my planter when I plant. I plant by hand uh, with a push planter. And uh, I flamed this bed about three days ago. And it looked identical to this bed over here. Uh, and as you can see, there, there are hardly any weeds left. Now, there are, there are new weeds emerging. What I will do now, at this point, is, uh, is I'll, I'll plant the crop in this, in this bed and then wait a few days before the crop comes up and flame it again. That's going to get any weeds that germinate between now and the time I flame. It also will get rid of these few little ones. You can't even see them. They're tiny little weeds that have germinated since I flamed it last time. I think, think one of the few downsides to, uh, to, to using this, this machine uh, it, it concerns safety. There's a lot of energy in here, and um, it has the potential for being pretty, pretty dangerous. Uh, I think that uh, it's especially important that, that all the valves are tight and that the pins are all in and everything. If this thing dropped off or something broke, it could be a real, a real disaster. I think the flame weeder has a real place in our operation here. Uh, there are some, you know, there are some, there are some improvements and, and, and there are some techniques that I need to work on, but I think I mean, it's not enough alone, but in conjunction with a, a proper and appropriate uh, and timely tillage, uh, I, I think it's indispensable. I find, I find that I'm using it, finding more and more uses for it uh, every year, and I, I certainly uh, am very encouraged uh, by what I've discovered.